Ooh, we're live. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the PragerU podcast. Today, we are doing a Friday fun podcast. We have plenty of stories lined up for you, some of which will make you angry, some of which will make you very, very happy. I am one of your many co-hosts. I'm Lepinobi. We've got Taylor over here on the boards so. doing all the tech stuff. we got Will here, and we got a special guest with Will. Yes, uh, this random homeless person here in Los Angeles <laughs> decided to wander onto the set today for our show. So we're happy to have her. Uh, it's going to be a great day. No, today we have Craig Straziri, who is the Chief Marketing Officer at PragerU. Thanks for coming on, Craig. Thank you, Will. Thanks for having me. What do you do at PragerU? Well, I'm actually surprised you didn't do your usual Chief Marketing Officer joke. Oh, about you being feminine? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? So, so Will no, Chief Marketing, if you're a CMO, it's a feminine job. Being a CMO is a feminine job to have. Look, look. The majority of CMOs are women. Will likes to show me this stat from an article about how majority of CMOs are women, and he's right. He's right. That is true. That is a fact. So, I, I do have a couple of responses to that. Uh, a majority of Instagram influencers are also women. So, uh, so that's number one. Number two, I'm a trendsetter, and uh, I want to break the glass ceiling. So, oh. for, for all the little young men out there, and boys who are just dreaming of becoming a chief marketing officer, don't let anybody ever tell you that because you're a male, you can't become a chief marketing officer. Don't let them hold you back. You can do whatever you want, you okay? Can, you, can. you can manage people like me when you get older. Exactly. It's every guy's dream exactly. to manage me. Oh. But what, what else do you do other than manage me? <laughs> what is marketing to you? What is marketing? Oh, well, that reminds me actually of a funny story. Uh, I'll just tell really quickly. My, my, someone asked my uh, six-year-old daughter a while ago, um, what, what do your parents do? And my daughters kind of know what I do, and they generally have heard me say I do marketing. And so my daughter Erin goes, oh, well, both my parents do marketing. And what she meant by that is my, uh, my wife markets like at the grocery store. <laughs> and she thought that when I, when I leave home every day, I also go market at the grocery store all day. So she thinks when I leave and go supermarketing all day, which, which would be fun if it, you know, but uh, no, that's funny. What I really do here is I oversee the marketing team uh, my job is to uh, reach as many people as possible with PragerU videos, including the great ones with Will and Amala. Um, and obviously, everyone knows that we're in a culture war, uh, and PragerU is one of the best opportunities to uh, educate the next generation uh, to what's really going on in, in this country. So um, I'm proud to be a part of this great organization. Beautiful. If I was a man, I would want to be a CMO. Well, that's yeah, thank you. You want to be a CMO now, thinking about it, because you're a woman. If you were a man, <laughs> you wouldn't want to be one. You know what I really wouldn't want to be? What I really wouldn't want to be if I was a man is a police officer. And that's that leads true. us. That is actually true. Ooh. That leads us to our first story, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to show you this article I'm here. I'm with these uh, transitions. I do very smooth transitions. It's my Sounds thing. Sounds like she wants to transition and be a CMO. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, transition to a CMO. <laughs> I'll be a CMO next time. Uh, this is from the Post Millennial. I'm going to show you this article. Breaking. Portland Police Riot Squad resigns following indictment of an officer. So I'll give you just a brief synopsis of what happened here. There is a rapid response team at the Portland Police Department, and they respond typically to riots, protests, things that sort of break rapidly, of course. Now, one of their officers on this rapid response team was now criminally criminally indicted for responding to a riot and at the time hitting one of the rioters with a baton. So he's been criminally indicted. And following that, every single officer within this rapid response team got together, put it to a vote, and they all resigned unanimously. What do you think about that, Craig? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you start with it? Okay. It makes perfect sense. If you mm -hmm. have people who are not being appreciated for their job, then of course they're going to want to resign from their right. position. If I worked here at PragerU, and I had my review today with Craig, actually. We had our... our Craig is all of our boss, was, by the yeah, way. Yeah, Craig yes. is all of our bosses, He's by our the boss. way. So we have to be on our best behavior for this. Clearly. Um, but I had my biannual review, and Craig said for once nice things about me. And But if he wouldn't have, then maybe I would resign. <laughs> because you want to feel appreciated your job. It's like, who would want to be a police officer nowadays when sure. every single day you go into work, you're hated. If you make one little mistake, you're probably going to get lambasted by the mainstream media and every single leftist out there. It, it makes perfect sense. They don't want to put up with it anymore. Right. It's a, it's a thankless job. I have some really good friends who are police officers and, and uh, hearing some stories about what they have to go through uh, day in, day out. They put their lives on the line. They get no thanks. And not only do they get no thanks, they get the opposite. They get hate. And it's just disgusting. It, it really bothers me. 
um, and and I, we got to do something about it. Right. Well, Will and I recently went on a ride along with the LAPD in South Central, and we're, that's going to be a vlog that's coming out for was you that, guys to was see. Was that fun? Were you and Will <laughs> by ourselves on that ride along? It sounds Taylor like it was a good time. Taylor was there too, guys. <laughs> 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 but another another hard thing that comes along with it is now police are being held back from actually doing their jobs. It's so difficult to not only go out into the field, arrest people, and actually fight crime, but when they do so, they are hated, like we've been saying. So just to give you guys some context as to what's happening in Portland, They've now instated this sort of catch and release policy when it comes to rioters and protests. And since that started, 540 different riot related cases have been caught and then thrown out. So what incentive do you have to be a police officer in America when the job that you do is immediately just swiped away and, and thrown under the rug? And then when you actually do your job effectively, people hate you. Yeah, but I mean, Portland is one of these leftist hellholes that we have here in America that tries out every single leftist idea to see if it sticks. It right. was like all the stuff happening with federal troops, like what was that last year when that was going on during all the riots? And people think that this is going to be a good idea, defunding the police. Let's set up Chaz in Portland and have all these different communes where the, we can't even get the, the herbs to keep growing. It's like all of these things that happen in these communities continually fail. And if they just looked at the system that we already have with police officers being honored, protected, we would have a much better society than the one that we are building right now in places like Portland. Right. Portland is the breeding ground for Antifa, for those of you who aren't familiar. Yeah, that so. article we read before. Exactly. Like the, I make this point all the time. You've probably heard it a million times. It's not a school to prison pipeline. It's a school to radicalism pri pipeline right now. People are going to school in Portland, especially, and they're being taught all this BS, this critical race theory, the gender theory. They're taught to hate their country. They're taught to hate the police. And then they leave school and they go and join people like Antifa. They join these protests. They promote these riots. And then police are the ones ones who have to respond to it and they don't deserve it who do these people call though when they're in trouble so like, do they even believe their own uh philosophies because the moment something happens to uh one of these people who's crying defund the police uh in their personal lives they call the police right so the same people that they go and bash the moment they need protection that's who they call so the hypocrisy is is kind of what's really outrageous here yeah, and by like defunding the police, taking away resources, demonizing them, who really suffers from that is the people who live in crime and ridden communities. You know, you're directly harming those people that that they, they actually need the, a baseline of protection in their community for so that like we saw it firsthand in the in, exactly in South the Central. Yeah, in the ride along, they were like, well, you can send social workers here, but if people aren't coming out of their houses because they're not allowed to by the gangs, they're you know, so there's so much control there, like you can't even start. They told us um, someone who would, would rather call sick out of work than ask a gang member to move their car out of the driveway if they're blocking it because that's the level of like control and influence that that the criminal criminals have over some of these communities and so the, you're not they don't even have a chance to like live their life and enjoy freedom you know jo enjoy their god-given rights and their constitutional rights uh, be because there's crime that's so un-american we need we need to allow the police to do their job so that they can protect our citizens that's like the, the base level they're not even being allowed to participate in america and that's like eight miles down the road from us you know it's insane and that little girl that we met who was the best boxer in the country for mm -hmm. her age who lived in watts what an right. incredible thing and she would go to sleep and hear gunshots every night and they were defunding the police and it's like if you had the police there to protect people like that who would have future lives, how would, who would have opportunities to grow and have, have good self-esteem, then you could, it just doesn't make any sense that the police are allowed to not be there and then things continually get worse. And you're not, you don't get a full scope of what police officers do until you actually go and experience and ride along with them and see what their job is like, because it's not just responding to calls and fighting crime. They have to actively go into these communities that they police. They have to get to know the people that they police. And a lot of these people are not great. They have to meet with not only the, the criminals there who are doing horrible things, but the children who are affected by the crime in these communities. They build long lasting, long withstanding relationships with these children. For some of the kids that are in these gang ridden neighborhoods, the police officers are the only positive role models that they have in their lives and they are going out every single day and building relationships with kids that change their lives that get them out of this cycle of gang violence and drug abuse and and drug addiction and prostitution and take them out of that and give them a chance to do so and right now like we say the the forefront of our battleground is is children because those are the people who are going to be influenced those are our future and we have to fight back with them PragerU is doing that with PragerU.com slash kids and we have a book called Otto's Tales that is trending number one on Amazon so I guys want to show you this this is Otto Tales the national anthem in the Pledge of Allegiance we have trended number one on Amazon if you want to get Otto's Tales go to PragerU.com slash 
kids books and you can purchase your own copy. Yes, even Craig can understand it. <laughs> <laughs> this book was actually made for Will specifically. <laughs> Will's been going around the country, putting a microphone in people's face saying, you know, what do you know about the national anthem? What do you know about the Pledge of Allegiance? And Will actually couldn't answer those questions himself. So we wrote this book just for Will. There we so go. So educate himself. I had to Google it. <laughs> <laughs> but we got it now. Did you guys notice all the pictures that we have around? The reason these are all pictures of Craig, as you guys can see. <laughs> Craig is a man who has done a lot of wonderful things in his life. <laughs> many, many great things for Prager U. You can see he's been on Fox News. I don't know which one of the pictures it is, talking about big tech censorship. This is the picture right here. This is when we were on the cover of the New York Times, which was very cool. I was on it too, Craig and I. Will always has to make sure he puts in, I was on there too. Yeah. <laughs> no big course, deal, but I, I was forgotten. on there. Yeah, of course. I mean, that photo shoot when the New York Times came was so ridiculous. They they came into my office and they first they turn off the lights and I'm like, what's going on here? And I don't really like my picture taken anyway. And then like they're like, look off to the side. And I'm like very uncomfortable with the whole thing. But I'm, I'm glad it's become like a source of comedy around the office because... Right. Every everywhere I go at PragerU, someone is hanging up this ridiculous picture. Of my <laughs> it's the same picture with Marissa. <laughs> oh yeah, and Marissa, our CEO, <laughs> likes to also mock this photo of me. So she she has a photo of like looking off into space, like <laughs> like pondering. Uh, that's you know just to make fun of me. That's it is fun. a little cheese ball. Yeah, Who it's is? a little the photo. Yeah. Oh little, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. It's, it's a little cheese ball. ball. Yeah, but but to my defense, like the lady taking the photographs, nice lady. It's not Craig's fault. No, it's not my fault. No. she was directing me into cheese ball territory. Yeah. There we go. Well, Amelie, you know I'm cool. Yeah, I, so. I know. I know. Way yeah, cooler than Will. Way cooler than Will. Kind of I'm cool, right, guys? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, guys. Yeah, right. <laughs> Do you guys want to talk about something that's not cool? I don't know. <laughs> Do we? We, covered... we were just talking about Craig. <laughs> <laughs> that was planned. That no, that was not planned. Uh, I swear good. to God. That was, that was all real. Uh, we covered previously on a stream uh, a woman by the name of Dr. Aruna Kilanani, and she is a doctor of psychoanalysis. She was featured at Yale. They actually brought her on as a speaker, and the subject matter of her talk was the psychopathic problem of the white mind. If red flags are going off for you right now, they should be because it was a totally racist okay. speech that she made for Yale students at the university. Now, I'm just going to read you a couple of the quotes here before we get into her video because she was recently interviewed about this speech and, and under fire for it and she gave her response just a news flash she doubled down on her response so these are some of the things that she said this is the cost of talking to white people at all the cost of your own life as they suck you dry there are no good apples out there white people make my blood boil any initial thoughts will and craig and taylor you're all like white it. men well, I, some of us are tanner than others. <laughs> <laughs> Craig is pale. I don't like it. No, my, I don't my, like it. Yeah, my tan is not where it should be, but yeah, I am tanner than tanner. you know. No. For, oh, for context, people, Will and Craig always have an ongoing competition about who's tanner. It's not. It's not a competition. A competition. Yeah, yeah, it's not correct. really a competition. <laughs> back to back to back champion. <laughs> yeah, for me. Well, either way, Doctor Aruna doesn't like you. Doesn't I don't matter. care if she doesn't like me. This lady's psycho. I mean, to come on and say those kind of things, it is the most racist stuff that you can say to anyone. You, like, it, as long as you say bad things about white people, it's fine. Right. You, you can't say anything about any other race or any other minority or gender or anything else. But if you say it about white people and you go to a public university in this country, you're heralded as a hero right. for saying what would be blatantly racist things. I mean, she goes on to talk in this about like killing white people. She yeah. has the idea of shooting white people in the head. Right. And then she's allowed to have a platform, come on another show and talk about her rationale behind it. Yeah, she That's gets psycho. to defend her statements. I've highlighted that quote here. She said, I had fantasies of unloading a revolver into the head of any white person that got in my way burying their body and wiping my bloody hands as they walked away relatively guiltless with a bounce in my step like I did the world an effing favor. Insane. Insane. Just like replace the word white with black and right. the world would go crazy. You would, right. be, you would be in jail. You right. would never be allowed on social media. Uh, this lady's insane. She's insane. And you just when you think, you know, this gets out, the world goes crazy about it. Everybody's really angry. They're giving her backlash. She gets on Mark Lamont Hill's show and she doubles down. So I'm going to play that clip for you right now. Here we go. There are no good apples out there. White people make my blood boil. When you say there are no good apples out there, uh, yeah. what, do you, what, do you, what kind of claim are you making? I'm talking about people have this idea that um, racism is something that if you're consciously racist or if you're a Klan member, and I'm sort of making the claim that racism is something that is unconscious and it is actually in everyone and everyone... Pause. 
<laughs> Everyone is racist. Everyone is racist. You know what I hate? I, and the left is so good at it. It's moving the goalpost. And we talk about this all the time on this show. But at first, you know, it was like, if you're racist, that's bad. Now it's not enough to say I'm not racist. Okay. It was enough. It was enough back in the day to be like, I'm not racist. I treat everybody the same. Nope. Now that's racist. Now you have to be an anti-racist. Okay. Now I'm an anti-racist. I'm actively fighting against racism in my daily life. Oh, wait, that's not good enough because you still have unconscious unknown bias. Wait, but, but if everyone is racist, then no one's racist. <laughs> Wait, from <laughs> Wait, but actually, I don't understand the point because if everyone is already racist, then what do you do? How yeah. do you fix that? If you're born racist, according to this lady, you're born racist, everyone's already racist, you already have these inherent biases and with everything that you think about when you see a black person or whatever on the street, what can be done? The trick that's just is how you are. The trick is by everyone, she means white people. Exactly. Right. So right. Just, just us. Yeah, it's yeah, just right. you guys. And the solution she's going for, or the, the implicit solution, is we need to not necessarily like exterminate white people, but tear down like America and society, Western society as we knew it. We need this new Marxist revolution to institute where we people who are enlightened by this ideology are in control of everything. And we, we live in a world where white people grovel and apologize and crawl around on the street like paupers and say we're sorry for existing, you know, and give up all their positions of power. That's that's sort of, I mean, implicitly the utopia that she's going for and you know this is like we want to live in a world this just shows like the duplicity of it that there's a double standard where she can go on there and spout this hate and if it were any other race it was wrong what that shows is that this isn't about liberal values or judeo-christian values where we want truth to prevail where we want people to have integrity where we want the right thing to be done overall it's just about i have this power structure i want this type of ideology to win and we've that's that's become the dominant narrative in our culture that like whiteness is this big evil boogie man and we have to tear it down by any means necessary even at the expense of truth and and you know fairness and just and true justice that the social justice is trying to like overcome that that's right i mean listening listening to her talk is just the result of a generation of indoctrination in the education system in our culture in our media this is what you get i mean this is warped thinking any rational person listening to this doctor uh, talking is would 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 realize on its face how 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 warped her mind and her thinking is, but unfortunately she's not alone. It's not like this is an isolated incident. This is actually a growing trend in our society, and a lot of it's just because of the indoctrination for an entire generation in our school system, which is why PragerU exists to fight back about, uh, against things like this. Right, and and they will tell you we're the ones who really love America. We don't really hate white people. We just want you guys to acknowledge this. And this language is dangerous. The language of unconscious or or founded in white supremacy is very, very dangerous. Because do you really love America if you think our entire country, our entire governance is founded in white supremacy? If that is true, you don't love America. And do you really love white people and want to help them if you think that they have unconscious bias that they inherit just by virtue of being born? No, you don't. You have hatred, it is dehumanizing. And again, it is this sort of eugenicist language in regard to white people. If it's unconscious, that would mean that I don't know that I have it. You don't know so that you have it. If I don't know that I'm racist, how do you know that I'm racist? <laughs> Yeah. That doesn't how does that doesn't make any sense. It's what the left does. They pigeonhole you in a way that is completely illogical that you couldn't possibly argue your way out of it. How do you argue your way out of unconscious racism? You can't. You can't. Amala is very good and very smart. I, <laughs> I, I, I'm actually I'm listening to Amala and I'm saying I'm so glad we added another personality to the Prager U <laughs> library. I mean, Will was doing a great job. I was doing an all right job. Amala, Amala, Stop. Amala is a star. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. Amala, you're very good at talking about these things. Well, thank you. Let's continue watching. I'm going to come through. <laughs> uses these words systemic they're like you know i i you i'm i know that racism is systemic and yet individually when you call them out they'll, they'll be like well it's not me you can't say that and so there's a disconnect between use of the word systemic and saying that racism is everywhere but the moment you point it out individually there's sort of people disown their own violence and racism w would it be fair to say based on your expertise that white people are psychopathic I, th I, I think so, yeah. I mean, I think that there's many lies that, and I had, didn't get to that part because what I've delivered was only um, part of a first series of talks, but the way, the level of lying that white people do that has started since col colonialism, we're just used to it. Hmm. Such what as every time you, sure, every time that you, um, you 
you steal a country, you loot, you say you've discovered something. I mean, this is this le this level of lies actually part of history. We don't say that we killed all these people, we got rid of all the Native Americans. We say we discovered America. You don't talk about the level of death. You don't talk about the level of what actually occurred. You wipe the, the slate clean, you sanitize the violence, and you actually got lost along the way. You're trying to go to India. And then you say you discovered something. And this level of, of discovery is everywhere. You've discovered vegetarianism. You know, you've discovered you've discovered yoga. You've discovered everything is a discovery, and it's all actually stolen. I <laughs> discovered yoga. Yeah. You can just probably behind the camera of Marco Monhill is just like the white producer holding the camera. <laughs> just like, yeah. yeah. He's just like, like hiding behind it. <laughs> yeah. He's like, what is going on? This is horrible. What, what I was less watching Mark. How could he be so silent during that? He just let her say all that dribble and didn't respond in any rational way. He didn't have any like legitimate follow up question. Right. He just let her go. I I just think it's so on. Uh, what do you say to that? What do you say How to that? How could you be white and still like agree with anything like this? I don't know. Again, if she was saying this about black people saying the exact same thing, how could any black person watch that? Right. And say, oh, I agree with this. That is insane. And talking about white people and the colonization, like only white people did this. Look at the Native American societies. They were killing each other for centuries beforehand. Look at the old uh, civilizations in Africa, like in Ghana right. or in the Middle East or the ancient dynasties in China and Japan who were conquering and killing people for centuries. Newsflash, like Libya has a real big slavery problem right now. Are you going to call them racist? Or what are we What are we doing there? That's what are we calling what the that? The world is like. The world is full of people taking over different places and everything. And it's not that it's it's always a good thing, all right? But you don't have to classify it by people's race and say that this is only a white person thing. It's just, this is what has happened throughout history. Right, and I did a rant earlier today talking about this whole Juneteenth thing. See how reductive people are on the left. If you're white, you're a colonizer. If you're black, you were a slave. It's so crazy to me that you can see somebody, judge them and assess their skin color, and that's the first immediate thing that you think of. I just don't get it, I don't get it. Someone on uh, YouTube said, when I found this show, I discovered it. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. Yeah, by her logic, all land is stolen land. Everybody is a colonizer if you really want to be historically accurate. But no, that only applies to white people here in America. Let's go do some yoga. <laughs> Let's go do some yoga. Yeah. We discovered yeah. African food today. Oh, yeah. yeah we did. We I did took Nigerian everybody. Food. Yeah, for Foreign Food Friday, I so took how, everybody for Nigerian food. How was food. that? What, what did you eat? So we had something called igusi stew, which is like a stew goosey with- Igusi stew? Igusi. That's a pass for me. <laughs> Will, yeah. Will said the same thing and he <laughs> ate it and it was amazing. Yeah, I actually, I was very, I was very nervous. Gonna oh. be honest, going in there <laughs> to I, eat I it. I guess that. You know, I didn't think Amla had a good taste in anything. She doesn't like Mexican <laughs> food. So I, I figured that this was gonna be bad. And then we went in right. there and ate it and the lady there was very nice. Oh, she loved and it Will. Was, she loved me and it was yeah. super spicy. Oh, so that's why you like it. <laughs> yeah. I had to pretend that I yeah. liked it. Will did But cry, it was super spicy, but, but then I ate like, I will say I ate, there was a little bone in my goat which I didn't like, we which was horrible. We do cook meat with the bone in. That was horrible. Yeah, we so do it gets, it gets a point docked for <laughs> not taking all the bones out, which was pretty disgusting. Yeah, the lady loved that Will was crying over how spicy yeah, the food really, was. Yeah, it was really, really spicy. Yeah, that that restaurant good. didn't exist before we went there and discovered it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that cuisine didn't. <laughs> we found it. Yeah. We colonized that why, restaurant. Why you would voluntarily have goosey stew. <laughs> I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. It's Friday. Enjoy your life. It is Try amazing. it, Craig. I have Try some, it. I have Craig some had the a fridge. turkey sandwich for lunch today. Yeah, so. just like he did for the last 30 years. <laughs> Extra <Yep>. mayo. <laughs> no mayo. Extra mayo, white bread. <laughs> <laughs> I have some in the fridge, Craig. I want to make you try it after this. <laughs> if you guys are enjoying this live so far, we know it's a lot of fun. Friday is our fun stream. If you want to get notifications every time that we go live or anything new that happens at PragerU, please text live to 41776 and you will get updates and you can see Will and I's faces and sometimes Craig. Apparently. Hopefully not. Rarely. <laughs> Very rarely. Rarely. <laughs> rarely. Maybe if you watch Fox and Friends yeah. sometimes, yeah. <laughs> you'll see. At 3 a.m. <laughs> you want to do... Uh, we're gonna, gonna do... move on to this story, or you want to do what time? Which one would you prefer? We're gonna do both. So I like that guy. All right, let's do this one. Craig okay. Likes him. We we've been bogging Craig you down him. with with some probably not so good news with everything that's happening out in Portland and this absolutely ridiculous, insane, idiot doctor who was on Mark Lamont Hill. But now I have a very good video to show you, and this is a parent showing up at a school board and discussing CRT. He's very very passionate about this subject matter, so I'm just gonna let him speak for himself. You talk about critical race theory, which is pretty much going to be teaching kids how to hate each other, how to dislike each other. That's pretty much what it's going to be. 
That's pretty much all I care to say. It's pretty much what it's going to all come down to. You going to deliberately teach kids this white kid right here got it better than you because he white? You going to purposely tell a white kid, oh, the black people are all down to suppress. How do I have two medical degrees if I'm sitting here oppressed? How do I get, first of all, time up. We only got five minutes now. Not five minutes. Two medical degrees. No mom, no dad in the house. Worked my way through college. Sat there and hustled my butt off to get through college. You going to tell me somebody that looked like all y'all white folks kept me from doing that? Are you serious? Not one white person ever came to me and said, well, son, you're never going to be able to get nowhere because you know the black people. But guess what? What's sickening about this whole thing is what y'all doing right now is already something I do in my community right now to speak out against stuff because black folks are getting told by other black folks, oh, you know you ain't going to be able to do nothing out there in the world because them white folks ain't going to let you get nowhere. Oh, you know you're not going to be able to do it here because you know, white, the, the white man, the white man going to keep you down. Well, how did I get where I am right now if some white man kept me down? How am I now directing over folks that look just like you guys in this room right now? How? What, what, what kept me down? What oppressed me? I work for myself from off the streets to where I am right now. You gonna sit here and tell me this lie of critical race theory? Of uh, this, this, this the reason why black folks can't get ahead because of white folks? Are you kidding me? This is what we come to now. I can't believe we even talking about this right now. The last thing I'm gonna say right here is something that's crazy. Martin Luther King said he wanted his kids to grow up in a world where they are judged by the contents of their what? Character. Their character, not their skin. If they let this stuff go on right now, it is absolutely doing the complete reverse of what he's doing. So when February comes, don't talk about Martin Luther King. When February comes, don't talk about black history. Mother dog will sit there and just pee, pee on his grave with this nonsense. That's exactly what's about to happen. Lastly, we are talking about our kids. We are talking about our children. What's so sickening about me, I love the Discovery Channel. You will see that on the Discovery Channel, animals will put their lives on the line to protect their children from yeah. danger. Yeah. Nobody want to get to the heart of the matter, get to the meat of the matter, get to the moral of the story. It all comes down to it. The person that's going to be suffering from this, the one that's going to be hurt from this, is the kids. Yeah. Ten years from now, if this stuff goes on, whose fault is it going to be? Whose fault is it going to be? Who are we going to look back on and blame for this? Because this is the stuff we're talking about right now. This stuff is going on right now. I do this stuff on a daily basis. I'm in the hood. I'm in the communities. I'm out there with folks in their face. I've been doing this stuff since I was 18 years old, talking to black folks. And you know what? None of them are buying this nonsense. None of them are. But if you want to implement this into the school system, I guarantee you to the day that I die, I'm going to be the very person right there debunking stuff, tearing stuff down, letting them know they can do exactly what I did and get exactly where I am by putting themselves to work and getting there. Ain't not one white person ever going to keep any of them from getting there. So the CRT stuff, BS. Oh, Preach. Wow. I think my eyebrows burned off. <laughs> Love that guy. <laughs> That's amazing. It takes one person to go out and say all these things and look at all those people who are speaking up and cheering him on just because he had he had the balls to go up there and actually say something. And 2.7 million views. Yeah. The, the whole country needs to watch this video. Yes. Everyone needs to watch this video. So please share this video. Right, right. And by that's sharing our podcast, which has the video within. <laughs> marketing. That's marketing. <laughs> that's what Craig taught me. He's really wow, good at this. Will, are yeah. you the next CMO? Yeah, that's it. Nah, not yeah. feminine enough. <laughs> But no, he makes the same point that we talked about earlier. And the front line of the culture war is not adults. It's not the establishment. It is children. And that's what we need to keep in mind all the time when we are talking about critical race theory, gender theory, all the stuff that is happening in schools. Because if you teach a kid from a very young age that they have no hope, that they have all these extra obstacles that they are going to have to jump through just by virtue of being black or of, by being a woman, their life is going to be so much harder. What is the incentive to strive or work if you think that systems and people are pitted against you? And it is so easy to lean on a crutch of being able to blame other people for your failures rather than teaching kids that you can be anything you want to be and if you don't succeed take some responsibility for that it's like when we were just talking with the last lady about the unconscious bias most people don't have no one has that unconscious bias this crt stuff that's why they have to teach it in schools right because you have to be taught to be racist right. you have to be taught to divide the world by race gender ethnicity whatever it is you have to be taught that people aren't naturally born racist all the little kids who are going to be learning this are going to be learning that little white kids have it better than them and the little black kids are worse off because of their skin color and they're never going to make it what a horrible thing to teach people this guy is exactly right it's like, have you ever met anybody in your life who says, I don't want somebody to succeed because they're a woman or I don't want somebody to succeed because they're black? It's just a, a dumb founding thing to me. Why would I ever want somebody to be held back in our society? You know that when people are held back in your society and they don't do well, everybody suffers, your community suffers. There is no reason for anybody to want to hold black people back in this country. Absolutely none. <laughs> yeah. no, Nothing. Look, he, he has two degrees. That's what he said. Like, yeah. How did I get two degrees right. with it, with no white man stopping me? The best part about this is just the courage. I mean, this is where there's a, there's so many parents who think just like him, right. who probably deep down have that same speech 
inside of them, the same story. They just don't have the courage to speak. And we're starting to see some some pattern of parents starting to wake up. You're starting to see more of these clips of parents starting to speak their minds, starting to at least get more engaged in their kids' school and understand what their kids are learning. And they're getting fired up, but we have a long way to go. We need more parents right. to get fired up. We need them to understand this is for the kids. Like what he said about the Discovery Channel and protecting your kids, I have three little daughters. Mm -hmm. That really speaks to me. That's why I work for PragerU. I am fighting for my kids. I don't want them to grow up in a country where they're they're going to look at people based on their skin color. Right. I want them to do what Martin Luther King said, look at them based on their character. So we all have to fight. And those who are on the sidelines watching this happen and not doing anything about it, th those people need to get in this fight before mm -hmm. it's too late. And a lot of people will come out and say, well, I'm so scared. I, I don't want to be canceled. Everybody's going to hate me at the PTA meeting. I might lose my job. But you have to think about uh, a risk assessment on this whole thing. In the short term, yes, things could be very bad for you if you speak out. Your community might exile you a little bit. You might be a little bit of, of a pariah. But if you don't speak out and you allow these things to continue and you allow the culture to shift in this direction, you lose everything of what America was meant to be, all the values that you want your children to have. And that is worth so much more than your job. That is worth so much more than having friends at your PTA meeting. That is worth so much more than the little bit of an alienation that you may get by speaking out. Yeah, no one cares what Becky in your book club thinks, <laughs> who has the worst cookies on the oh, entire no, block. No, that's very important. Social status, <laughs> well, PTA moms, that's a thing. That's important that's to Craig. Thing. Yeah, it's that's a, a thing. thing. <laughs> it's important to Craig, but maybe not most men. Yeah, you know what so. we're about to find out? We're about to find out what's really important to Craig. Because oh, yes, we are. We have a segment. <laughs> Craig's face right there, he was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> we have a segment made just for you, introduce Introducing Craig's List. Oh Ooh. Is, is that supposed to be me? It kind of no, looks like no. me. No, I will. Oh, so we've compiled a list of things that we want to get, you know, a flash opinion on from you. Yeah. Uh, so we're I haven't told these list. to Craig before, okay? okay? So he doesn't know what these are. I okay. just want everyone who's watching to know that he doesn't know what these are. So okay. these are off the cuff. Some of them are funny. Some of them are serious. We just want your immediate hot take on these things. Number one, men eating seafood. No. <laughs> no one should eat seafood. <laughs> When steak exists, why eat seafood? It's gross. I wholeheartedly agree. It's gross. I, don't I eat fish. disagree. I eat seafood and I love it and it's fantastic. You're a woman. I think you guys just have bad taste. No, it's a scam. It's a marketing scam. It's a marketing scam. <laughs> like steak is Wait. better than seafood. Correct. Steak is better I'm than seafood. I'm not like 100% of the time. What is the marketing scam? <laughs> There's what? no way people truly enjoy the taste of seafood that they just do it because they want to say they're eating seafood. Oh. oh, I had a fish and I had sushi and I had pokey and oh, it's what like is a all class, this new stuff? It's a yeah, class it's a, thing. Right. It's, just, right. it's just a way to, you know, it's an icebreaker. Yeah. You know, they don't actually like the taste of it. You know, who eat, you know who eats sushi? That chick who said that all white people are psychotic. Right. Dr. That's, Aruna? She, she eats is a sushi. Su yes. Bill and I agree. That is a sushi eater. Is one thing we can agree on. Taylor, do you have a hot take on this subject? matter no i, I didn't just, realize I mean, like i don't I, I prefer steak to like sushi or pretty much any seafood but like i'll, I'll eat some seafood now and then so. okay oysters See, disgusting i like right. i actually like oysters i like raw no. oysters, like oysters are so, they're so, so fresh bad. tasting no <laughs> you don't like oysters no no, no yeah of course they're disgusting <laughs> like at any wedding or party where the waiters walk around with the hors d'oeuvres like those guys can just keep walking <laughs> unless you got like You're a like, slider keep or something walking, with Bobby, like some Greg, real meat the in cheese there. and prosciutto yeah yeah exactly yeah. Like okay a I'm a, would I you say this oysters. is toxic masculinity happening i mean right it here? just might be yeah. it just might be and if you like seafood you suck <laughs> <laughs> You're an idiot. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Apparently, I suck. There and goes I'm an the idiot. audience. Bye, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks for watching. All our seafood lovers are gone. Okay. Number two on Craigslist: transgender women competing in women's sports. No. <laughs> are these yes and no questions? <laughs> well, that's just how you're answering. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, I mean, this is absurd. And and having three daughters who I you know want to push into athletics and sports, this is just not fair. It's not right to to have your daughters and there's women out there who train their entire life. Uh, for to to win a race and then to get beaten by a man who's identifying as a woman is is so demoralizing. It actually is so anti-woman. This whole movement is is anti-woman, which is right. which is infuriating for any woman out there who strive to to have athletic su success. Um, this is yeah a, a hard no from me, and really should be a hard no from everybody. Right. People had common sense, yes. For some context here, the woman in this picture, the woman man in this picture is Laurel Hubbard, a man who transitioned to being a woman and is doing weightlifting in New Zealand and has just crushed every single person she's got gone up against and is going to be in the Tokyo Olympics. So 
It's Can't great. wait to will not watch that. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, I never watched women's weightlifting before anyway. Yeah, Gonna yeah. be honest. <laughs> it was right behind women's curling. Yeah. <laughs> not something I'm watching. It's on the list. Next one on Craig's list. Wow. White men with afros. How do you feel about white men with afros? Well, I know why you're asking this. Uh, so I'm going to be yes here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah. a, I'm a throwback. I'm a retro. I'm, I support it. I'm all in. Craig, Will and Taylor? Cultural appropriation, but I'm in. Craig has a great afro. You guys want to see it? <laughs> you don't really have that picture, do you? I do. Oh, oh geez. Oh, oh God. Lord. Oh, man. This is brutal. What, did, my, did you guys call my mom to go digging through my I think she album? has Nikki. Yeah. Why, why did Nikki have it? I have okay. Nikki. Yes, this was me in high school. I rocked the afro. I, I'm actually, I'm not ashamed of it. I no, Craig, you look. actually look better uh, like that. That's what Marissa said. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it when, is. When everyone was passing this photo along at PragerU, and I was like, oh, that's ridiculous. And Marissa's like, no, you look much better there than you do now, basically. <laughs> you look like you should be in, like, a 90s sitcom or yeah. something. Yeah. Coming of age That's movie. cool. I love 90s. What's Mr. the guy Studio from Girl. Saved by the Bell? What's his name? Zach Morris? No. No, no he looks Screech. Screech. Oh, Screech. Screech. Oh, Screech. I don't want to be Screech. I want to be <laughs> A.C. Slater. Like Screech. <laughs> I want to be Zach or A.C. Yeah. He looks like me Kelly if I take this I take the yeah. headband off. <laughs> That's an insult. <laughs> I'm pro white men with afros, peace, by, by the way. way. Yes, that, is, that is true. I'm gonna uh, pull my black card and say that I'm pro white men with afros. I approve your your cultural appropriation on that one, Craig. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You're very welcome. Next on the list: censorship of conservatives on the internet. Yeah, that would be a no. <laughs> would be a, uh, no. You're against that? I, I am against it. I am against of censorship of anyone, really. So nothing really to do with conservatives. I'm a big believer in free speech, obviously within reason. The way the internet was founded in 10 years ago, they basically would allow any, any speech except pornography and violence. And now they've really just morphed into opinions they disagree with. As everyone in our audience hopefully knows or should know, uh, we are being heavily censored on all platforms. I mean, Amala came into PragerU and within about a week uh, had us banned from TikTok, both on the <laughs> PragerU. What can I Amala. say? Yeah. I work fast, ladies yeah, she and gentlemen. Does. She does. That was very are you impressive. a sleeper agent from the left that's <laughs> yeah, in here exactly. just trying to get us she banned? She came in here and got us banned in a week. I never actually left the leftist organization that I was working for. I'm <laughs> yeah. like still working for them. She's double a double agent. Cool. It's like the Project Veritas. <laughs> right. Watch out. She's a, is that a camera? <laughs> yeah. If Amala was Project Veritas, <laughs> we would all lose our jobs. Yeah, we'd be <laughs> so done. It would be done by now. <laughs> okay, next on Craig's list, white BMW convertibles. Oh, that's, I, I don't even need to, Craig doesn't need to answer this one. It's the best car you could ever have in your life. It's really embarrassing. You know, it's like, it's a, it's a look at me. I'm better than you. I think I'm cool. It's like Michael Scott trying to drive that, like the, the old terrible it's convertible. It's Brittany. It's, so, uh, and for the audience who doesn't know, Will Witt drives one of these and he comes into the PragerU parking lot with his music bumping, his sunglasses on. It's really embarrassing. The whole company is embarrassed by it and he thinks he is so cool. Everyone looks at me and they say, I want to be that Armenian no, say, guy. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was that Armenian. Uh, That's funny. We all collectively cringe when Will pulls into the parking lot. This How's that? True. Well, you guys can cringe all you want while I'm driving 10 miles over the speed limit on Ventura <laughs> Boulevard. And just put the top down. Financially, it's not, it doesn't make sense. Like, cars are a terrible investment. There's no reason you should have a BMW. But Rethink your life, Will. Yeah. Listen. And also check your privilege. Just yes, both of those. Would you get one of those for your daughter? Privilege. That's the question. <laughs> yeah, she, your daughters can have my white BMW. And I'm done with it. <laughs> no, not happening. <laughs> not happening. <laughs> Next on Craig's list, the lack of fathers and male role models in America. How yeah. do you feel about this? Yeah, I feel this is a, a serious problem that doesn't get enough attention. Uh, most of problems in our country stem from a lack of fathers and a, a lack of family values, a lack of traditions, um, so especially fathers. Fathers are so important to our society, especially for young daughters. Fathers are, are what keep them in line. I mean, you see a lot of young girls and how they act this, in this day and age when they get older, and I always wonder, where are their fathers? Like, where's the father, okay. you know, instilling values in them? We need more fathers out there. Um, being a dad, I'm, I'm proud to you know, play a strong role in my daughter's life. I'm so thankful for my dad, who played a really important role in my life and taught me how to be a good husband, how to be a good dad. It is Father's Day this weekend, so dad, I yeah. doubt you're watching, but happy Father's Day if you, <laughs> if you are watching. Uh, He's not watching. And to all the fathers out there who, who are investing in their kids and, and, and are being a good role model, happy Father's Day. That was great. Here, here. I didn't even day. think about Father's Day. That was really yeah, good. Yeah, it, it is on Sunday. Yeah. It Happy is on Father's Sunday. Day to the real fathers out there. To all the real fathers all the out there. 
sperm giving people is that what you'd say it is <laughs> <laughs> well you have birthing oh, yeah, people. women are birthing people, birthing people, people so and then siring people yeah, just, you shouldn't go there <laughs> <laughs> i have yeah. one more shout out so father's day is this weekend alan estrin's birthday is this weekend Woo! alan estrin is the father of prager U. he founded Heck prager yeah. U with dennis prager so this is also a happy birthday and happy father's day to alan for founding prager U. happy birthday oh, alan job. happy birthday alan we made him laugh <laughs> yeah. that, that is that is no small feat it is no small feat what is next on craigslist now will wanted to put this one on here just to rub it in <laughs> yes literally yeah. just to rub it in so it says fathers with three daughters i have three daughters and, and everyone around here knows i i mm -hmm. want a son uh and likes to kind of rib at me that it's a deficiency on my part <laughs> oh my uh, that i'm emasculine so i couldn't I make a boy it's terrible but i know it's terrible my, i love my daughters <laughs> but yes, I do want a son. <laughs> like, that is, that is still true. It's still true. I saw this dad with like five girls and then a boy as the sixth kid. I was like, that is perseverance. <laughs> that guy did not give up. And I admire people like that. Yeah, good. There we go. That's your message. Does your comment earlier that you're pushing your daughters into sports have anything to do with this? <laughs> well, girls can play sports too. Yeah. You big patriarchal bigot, yeah. Taylor. <laughs> they can be equestrians and volleyball. And, yeah. My daughter had equestrian class yesterday. <laughs> really? I love that. Wait, Will wants That's, to be an equestrian. Yeah, I know, I know he, he wants to be a jockey. He wants to wear a little helmet, the whole get up. Yeah. I would love to yeah. throw a horse over yeah. some barrels. That's okay. Really what? what is it? Or the, the, the bars, you know. Yeah. Look, Will and sports it, don't go together. They really don't. I'm learning Stick that. Stick to influencing. Stick to influencing. <laughs> Stick to your girly job. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Next one on Craigslist, and this is the last one. Oh, this is easy. Who's your, pra who's your favorite PragerU personality? I just this, had a mini stroke. This is so easy. It's Amala. Amala oh, is just, wow. you know, Will was doing these lives before. I, I, I hope this isn't too personal. Don't. And then when Amala joined, the viewership went way up. It could be a coincidence, <laughs> but I have a feeling the audience feels the same way. Listen, Amala is also my favorite personality. Oh, that's nice. So even over myself, that's a good. Amla does a great job. But that's it's actually cry. it's actually not true. Will mentioned earlier today that uh, we have performance reviews here at PragerU, oh, uh, and today was Will's performance <laughs> review, which I have to give him because I'm his boss. Um, and there's a self assessment that the employee has to fill out where it asks you to rate on a one to five scale how you think you're doing. And I've been at PragerU for six years. Uh, the marketing team has 20 staff members on it. I've seen a lot of self assessments here at PragerU in my time. There's only one person <laughs> who ever gives themselves all fives across the board every single year without fail. And, and it, it amazes me. Most people will throw in a four just for like humility. Will without fail is like, I'm all fives. I'm the greatest. And part of, me fives. part of me respects it. But then part of me is like, okay, this is ridiculous. Listen, if you're not doing a good job at your work, then be better. Don't write about in your review. If you know that you're screwing up at work, you don't need to write about it in your stupid review. Just do better. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like, if you're giving know. yourself twos and threes, you shouldn't be working at this company anyway. You should be fired. Wow. This, this is That's true. We, we have very excellent staff here, but it's just very funny that you think very highly of yourself. Well... Someone has to. So basically, Will <laughs> needs to true. be told he's doing a bad job because he always thinks he's doing a, a tremendous job. I love it tremendous. when people... He's doing the best job. Yeah. When fans come up job. to Will and they're like, Will, you're so great. I love your podcast. I love what you're saying. Like, you really speak to me. I'm so glad you're fighting the culture war. He goes, someone's got to do it. <laughs> it's true. Does he really Someone, say that? What do you mean? That's so does true. Really yeah, say that? say that. Oh, that's ridiculous. Why wow, is that ridiculous? <laughs> Someone does have to do it. Listen, if... <laughs> Someone has to get up and fight for the values. That's what I do. That's what you do too. Someone's got Amala is my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Wait, one more. When we were in the car on the way to, to lunch today, Will had a call. And of course, he like just broadcast his calls. If you ever happen to call Will, you, you, you will You're be on, on speaker. speakerphone. But the guy was like, or Will was like, how you doing, man? And the guy was like, any better? And I'd be you. And Will's like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> He's laughing that's now. Sad. He loves, he loves yeah. his own jokes. Oh, Listen, I'm a funny guy. That's why I get myself all five. Sadly, don't, there's no humor category. Don't you know thing. speakerphone etiquette? If you're on speakerphone in the car, you need to disclose to the person on the other end that you're on speakerphone. He did not. He did no, not. I did not. No, no, he's fine. We got to teach him some speakerphone etiquette. Oh, man. Well, 
we are gonna we're gonna probably end this stream here and we're gonna go teach will how to you know turn off his speakerphone in his car <laughs> if you guys like this stream please like subscribe click the notification bell because you don't always get notified when we go live if you want to be personally notified when we go live text live to four one seven seven six and you will be signed up to get live updates for when will and i want to show you our faces greg do you have a closing message for everyone watching today something that people can walk away with not particularly. <laughs> <laughs> and that's our show. Yeah, Thanks yeah, for yeah, watching, yeah. everyone. We really also appreciate it. take our live it. stream survey. Yeah, take our live stream out. survey. It's in the comments down below. And we are going to see you guys next Monday at 2.30 p.m. PST, 4, 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Thanks, guys. Bye. Peace.